Harry Truman's 1948 re-election campaign had all the hallmarks of failure. Two years earlier, his Democratic Party lost control of both houses of Congress. His legislative agenda was stalled. One of the guys who used to serve in his cabinet announced he'd run against his former boss as a third-party candidate. Truman's approval ratings were bottom of the barrel low. Things were not looking good. He was expected to lose his bid for re-election. The Chicago Daily Tribune went so far as to print a headline saying he did lose his bid for re-election. But Truman won. And Truman won in part because he ran his campaign not just against his Republican challenger, but also against that Republican Congress. At his nominating convention that year, President Truman delivered one of his most fiery speeches ever. He called the Republican-controlled Congress the Do-Nothing Congress. And he called on that Do-Nothing Congress to return to Washington to a special session to finally do its job and pass some legislation. Thank you very much. After that fiery convention speech, Congress did come back for a special session, and they still did nothing. And President Truman, therefore, continued to call them the do-nothing Congress. And he railed on them about it on the campaign trail, and that campaign trail led him all the way back to the White House for a second term. 1948, Harry Truman talking about and criticizing the 80th Congress. This Congress, the one in Washington today, is the 112th Congress. And here's what has happened since the time of Truman's do-nothing Congress. Here, that is uh, Truman's Congress there with the red arrow there. That's the one that couldn't get anything done. That was so terrible and hapless and unpopular that Truman was able to run an otherwise hopeless presidential campaign against them and win. The graph shows how much legislation was passed by that Congress, right? That was history's do-nothing Congress. Here is our current Congress. <laughs> the good old 112th. Here's our current Republican-led Congress. Truman's Congress passed a meager 900 or so bills. Our Congress passed fewer than 100. It's the weakest, most anemic record on record for any Congress ever. Since the congressional clerk started counting the number of bills passed, no Congress has accomplished less than John Boehner's Congress. And you know what? It turns out people still care, just like they did in Truman's time. The esteem the American people have for Congress right now is mired in the low double digits. So there are still a few more days left in the 112th Congress, but they have set a new mark for congressional uselessness. The good news is nowhere to go but up, right? Maybe not. Today, the Republican House Majority Leader Eric Cantor released the new House calendar for next year, for the next Congress. And if you're hoping for a little more production next year compared with this year, look, 365 days on the calendar next year, Republicans have decided to give themselves 239 days off, including the weekends. They'll only be in session for 126 days, roughly a third of the year. That's it. The other two-thirds of the year is reserved for time not spent at work. There are three months next year when the House will be in session for a ground total of eight days. <laughs> so if you liked the do less than the do nothing Congress we've had this past year, you are going to love the next Congress next year. Just don't blink because you might miss them.